Bitcoin hits over $28,000, 28,500 ish to be exact. And we're currently sitting at 27,755 bucks as of the recording of this video. Take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. This is my chart here. I know it's kind of crazy, guys, but I did go over it with you yesterday on what's going on with it. But just to really quick break it down, the yellow line is when Bitcoin is pumping and it's going up. And the blue line is when Bitcoin is falling. OK, and these are all perpendicular lines. OK, all perpendicular to each other. Right now, if we pay attention to this yellow line here, we're currently in this yellow channel. See that how Bitcoin right here, it dumps down into the channel, goes sideways. And that tells me this is the bottom of the channel, pumps back up, hits the top of the channel right there. That gave me the top. And then we went sideways, hit the bottom again. See how it indicated the same as when we started rallying right here. It hit it again right here and then it pumps up right here, which it was the same right here. So very, very interesting, right? How Bitcoin kind of just sticks to this channel. Very similar to this situation here. Very similar to this situation here. So it's very temporary. Bitcoin could follow this channel, but then eventually it breaks either out of it or it breaks down. Right now, we're in that channel at the moment, and we've tested this orange line a couple of times. Okay, this orange line is a very strong resistance line. Why? Because if we go ahead and take a look at what happened here, so this was last week's candle, we pumped all the way up to 28,500 and then it sold off. And then even in this candle right here, we pumped back all the way up to around 28,500 almost 600 and then we sold back off again okay and if we go ahead and take a look at history we can see that bitcoin hovered around this price a couple of times it wicked all the way down and it held as support a couple of times a range here it held as support a couple of times and right here as well so right now we're at that point but we're underneath it so that tells me that we're at a strong resistance point if we can actually break into it, we could potentially be in this pink zone right here, this rectangle pink box that I've drawn. But even if we get into it, there's also another zone right here. We can see how there's a lot of wicks. See how all these wicks here? So Bitcoin actually didn't stay in the zone for a long time. It either you know wicked down and went back up or it just continued to keep falling right here into that zone. So we really need a pass like... 31,700 before it could really get into this upper part of the box. That's when we could get all the way up into that like $43,000 mark. For now, it's a battle. We're trying to fight that part. You know, we've tried it already twice and it's very difficult to break it. That kind of tells me that we could potentially break down to the bottom of the yellow line. And if that were the case, it could be somewhere at around 24,000 ish, you know, 25,000. That doesn't seem to be out of the question. But then after that, if we're still bullish, you know, it could possibly go back up. Up, right. And if I go ahead and take a look at the DXY right here, I can just tell that, you know, maybe there's some more upside for Bitcoin just because the DXY, it kind of peaked out and then it has this topping tail shooting star candle here. And then now that's an indicator that the chart is telling me that it's going to go down. So when the dollar is weak, that typically is good for markets and it's good for Bitcoin. And so the dollar seems to be headed back down. And so take a look at this orange line right here. I went over it yesterday, but this was a really great time to buy Bitcoin because if you have seen this orange line and when Bitcoin was following it for these past couple of weeks, it was a really great time to buy. Why? Because if we go ahead and travel back this orange line, we can see that Bitcoin respected that line here. This is during the whole pandemic situation went all the way back down and passed it but then it went back up and it met that orange line for a couple of weeks before shooting off and even same here this was the lows after the 2017 blow off top the all the all-time high and then it started crashing back down and that's where we we're at here and we we hovered at around this orange line for quite a while and even back here right here there's some history and even all the way back here deep into 2013 and 2014 we were at that orange line too so when Bitcoin Bitcoin was, you know, here back in uh, November of 2022 to 2023. I mean, that's when I was buying Bitcoin because it just seemed like such a great time to buy. I bought up half of a Bitcoin at that time. I should have bought more, obviously, but then it pumped all the way up. So I was happy. I ended up selling at around 21,000 to 24,000. I thought that Bitcoin wasn't going any further than that. You know, we reached the upper part of this yellow channel. And so I didn't think it was going to go any further than that. And I thought it was going to head back down uh, into this 
this blue channel right here, but Bitcoin actually shot off, you know, and that's perfectly fine. I made my money and I took my profits. I could have made more money, obviously, but I'm perfectly fine. It's all about buying low and selling high, right? And so I'm definitely not around to chase a pump. It's just a lot more dangerous to chase a pump. And right now we're definitely pumping. You know, if you chase a pump and you actually make money, right? You're making money, but you're taking on more risk. Say if Bitcoin actually fell, Bitcoin actually fell into like the lower prices and then you lost some money, you're less likely to continue to buy just because you bought when it was high. And then now you feel burnt and you feel a little bit jaded and you don't buy when Bitcoin is actually at the actual lows, you know, that's around the time that where you should be buying. But since you bought at the top and then now you're kind of just like, oh, whatever, like I want to just walk away. So that's why I don't like chasing pumps because one, of course, is more risky. And also two, I really want to buy during the times when it is low. And if we go ahead and take a look at the fear and greed index, we can see that Bitcoin is hovering at around this 66 greed zone. It's not that high and it's not that fearful. So Bitcoin can really have, go in any direction at the moment. It's not at this zone here of around 75 and above, but it's also not in the fear at, in this orange zone, uh, 50 and below. I'm expecting that we revisit this orange line sometime, which will be another great time to buy. I, I can kind of see it actually going back down and breaking below this. So if you guys notice this blue line that I have right here, this darker blue line, why did I darken it? When Bitcoin was at 69,000, that's where I started the line. And then Bitcoin uh, fell and then it bounced up in March of last Last year and it went back up to that blue line and then we were here and then Bitcoin actually tested this line here a couple of times before bouncing up. So I expect for us to revisit this blue line as well sometime in the future. We could revisit this point and that's why I have these two red dots here. Maybe it could happen in May, maybe it could happen in August or it could happen some other time. But if it were to meet this blue line deeper into the future, it could keep going lower and lower because of course it's at this angle here. So Bitcoin is pumping now. We'll see how high it can actually go. Lots of reasons why Bitcoin has been pumping is due to all of this bank crisis going on. Lots of people pulling their money out and seeing Bitcoin as a safe haven at the moment with USDC as well. People pull their money out and put it into Bitcoin. Another reason, of course, like I said earlier, the DXY is headed down, which means it's good for Bitcoin. This coming Wednesday, it's looking like the Fed is going to raise interest rates or pause. If it pauses, then rally is going to happen in the stock market and Bitcoin. Perhaps Bitcoin will continue to keep shooting up if the Fed pauses. If the Fed doesn't pause and they raise it by 0.25 basis points, Bitcoin could potentially fall. Markets in general could potentially fall. The bank crisis where the banks are unable to pay out their depositors and so the Fed has stepped in and covering all of the withdrawals. Some people are considering this as quantitative easing where the Fed has finally pivoted because they've already added $300 billion to their balance sheet. However, how I see it is that I don't think the Fed has pivoted. I think they are patching up what they have created. So they raise rates knowing that they're going to break something. And when something finally broke, like this bank crisis, they are patching it up. They're taking care of it. They're doing whatever they can so it doesn't get worse. But inflation is still at a high 6%. The goal is 2%. So we're quite far away from that. And I don't think things have gotten that bad to where they feel like they really need to jump in and print. Unemployment is still very, very low. So I think they have a lot more room to continue to raise rates. And so we'll see what actually happens. What do I know? Maybe they will pause, but I will try my best to keep you guys updated by Wednesday. We'll see if they raise or they pause. So definitely subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that video. And also consider hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. All right, guys, that's about it for the video. My name is Jimmy Invest and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.